Hello guys, my name is Arun and welcome to my channel. This series is a series of tutorials on Fortran programming. Now in this tutorial, we will be looking at another special type of uh, select case feature that we haven't checked in the last time. Okay. Now uh, in this program, uh, we will uh, look at uh, we will look at a certain features. Uh, we will look at uh, we will look at this feature, this special select case feature, with an example with a, sh a short example. Now. In this program, what we'll do is that we'll be we will be look we'll be displaying the weather of a day based on the temperature and RH. And what we're exactly doing is that we'll get the temperature and RH for a particular day. The RH means relative humidity for a particular day, and then we'll ju we'll just say that the weather is hot or sunny or in something like weather the weather is you know, freezing or cold or warm or something like that. Or if the, the, the humidity is dry or very little dry, or pleasant, sweaty, or so on. For that, what I need is that my program starts here. I write the implicit and here. What I need is that I have an integer of type of kind four. See, instead of this, what I can do is that uh, is that I can equate equate kind four like this. Okay, but instead instead uh, instead I have another option where I can just put a star and then write four as it is. Now I'm making this as an allocatable array uh, and uh, allocatable array. So there will be two arrays, like namely for temp, temp and uh, RH. Temp stand for temp for temperature, R for RH for storing the relative humidity. Now I have a character array. Okay, this has to be n. Now I have a character uh, array, uh, each uh, each of length 10, named T and R. T for storing the string, string and R for storing the R. T for storing the string for temperature and R for storing the string for you know the relative humidity and what I need is an I need an integer integer of value n as simple as that now what I do is that uh, n stands for the number of days we are going to get the data so I am just writing print okay comma enter the number of dates and enter the number of no it's in brackets days okay and then let's see and uh, I get the I get the value of n using read n. Okay. Now I allocate. I allocate uh, uh, n values of temp and uh, n va n values of Rh. Okay. And then finally, uh, what I do. Sorry, what I do at the last is that uh, let me just think let me just think this through let me just think this through okay I'm going to deallocate temp and RH since they have already been allocated I'm deallocating that here now what I have here uh, is uh, what I have here is that I've used I used a looping count looping variable to uh, loop, loop counter to get the value of the temperature in RH for each and every day okay so I'm get I'm using this print statement to display the statement and uh, this read statement to get the values of temperature in RH one by one and then using the same kind of a do loop but with insta inside I'm uh, I'm using a statement and an else sta else statement and inside this else statement I have a second case select case now in this if statement, if, the temp if somebody enters a temperature less than minus 90, which is absolutely a theoretic, absolutely not possible on Earth, okay? Then maybe in some other planets, yeah, but not it's, as of now, it's not possible on Earth. Then the, this entire loop exits, entire loop exits, as simple as that. Uh, and uh, and if this if this is not true, what it will do is that uh, it will just go through the select case of value of temp. Now this is the feature of it. Suppose if the value of the temperature is less than 10 degrees Celsius, let's say, yeah, you don't have to give minus something to 10. All you do is that put a colon in the front and write 10, and it means that it, it, this will this this case will hold good for all the values less less than or equal to 10. Okay, and that being the case, let's say that I like I write the temperature st for string to be freezing. You know, if it's 10, it's very very cold and st at, at 10 degrees Celsius and below. So I, let me say just freezing. To indicate how cold it is, but if you guys want, you can make subdivisions of this uh, range to make it simple. Now, to make you to fit your convenience, that doesn't matter. 
Now suppose if I set the condition like between 11 and 20 and you guys must notice this number and this number should they should not overlap they should be completely non overlapping so make sure you guys take that into consideration while doing the programs and all okay now suppose if the case is le between 11 and 20 11 degrees Celsius and 20 degrees Celsius it's still a little cold so I write the case to be cold okay I say the string variable to be cold if it's from 21 to 30 you know reasonably manageable for many people so I write this to be warm and if it's between 31 and 35 yeah it's hot kind of hot so it'll, it's, it'll start to get a little more uncomfortable at this point so I write it hot and if the case is beyond 36 degrees Celsius I don't have to write any upper limit all I have to do is write that 36 with the with the colon and saying it's very hot whereas the default case uh, okay I think it's case default I think if the uh, let the case the the, uh, the default case is that I write that t equals unknown because if somebody enters a temperature that doesn't fit in this value and don't know where does it fit uh, anywhere else I just put the condition to be you know unknown. Okay. Similarly, when this go when this all happens in the do loop only when this happens out perfectly, the temperature is perfect. I'm uh, putting this into another if statement, uh, nested if state uh, nested if state uh, another if statement in the same if statement so this is like uh, nested if statement and it show it checks whether the rx is greater than 100 or less than 0 if these both of these cases are practically not possible at least at the at least at the surface level okay uh, rx cannot be greater than the less than 0 and rx if it's greater than 0 greater than 100 it will be you know closer for me that's all you can say okay now that being the case uh, if, th if this happens the this entire loop exits and if that's, that's not then rx is a finite value and I'm getting a condition. I'm setting a condition like this. If it's less than 20, I set it dry. If it's 21 to 40, I set it little dry. Similarly, I set it pleasant, sweaty, and harsh based on the RH ranges. Now, 41 to 60 is okay. It's good for good for everybody. 61 to 80 makes people a little sweaty, and 81 above is a little too hard for people to tolerate. And the case default. Suppose if somebody enters a value that does not unknown, it will say case default, and then we'll end this. End select. We'll end. We'll end this end select, and uh, we'll do. We'll end. We'll end these both do statements and all. Okay. And what we'll do is that we uh, will, you know, do an end end do statement here, so that everything comes under this comes under this entire loop. This loop will print again and again, and uh, till the values end. So this uh, this formatting variable i sorry this format i instead of giving it in a separate command separate format statement or writing within quotes i'm writing this in a single line using the star command so so this is another feature i can take care of and uh, one more thing is that i'm ex extending this line print statement in three lines uh, using and at the front and at the, at the back at, and at the front to make sure that this line is actually a continuation and it's not a single and so it's a single line but not a multiple line now if I were to compile this, I still get an error, possibly because I haven't defined int i, I yet, so let me just say i, now if I just compile this, uh, this is okay, okay, now let me see, uh, uh, if this, let me see if this works, hmm, Okay, let me see what are the errors we get. Requires a scalar logical expression. Yeah, sorry, I forgot. Uh, th this uh, this should be you know, uh, I because we are just comparing of temp temp of i and there will be lot of values here. So let me just put temp of i here, and similarly. Rh, I just put temp of i here, and similarly I put temp of i here and temp of i here. Now I think this will compile. Yeah, it works compile. Works fine. By the way, this f8 is an easy way to cross verify and verify your compilation. It's good to work at. Okay. Now, uh, before I write all of this in a. Uh, 
before I do all the three lines of commands to get all the values printed, there is another simple way to do that. Okay, what I do is that I just create a new file and I save this. Okay, and I save this. I save this in the same file that we are working at. Okay, I save this file weather dot sh dot where not the extension is dot sh. What we are going to do, we are going to write a small shell script to say run this program again and again so that we don't have to write the commands again and again and to get get them printed and executed so what i do is that i type g fortran okay i'm going to compile this so minus c in in that uh, weather dot f95 okay and then what i'm going to do is that uh, i'm going to list out all, list out all the files that have been created Okay, and before that, I'm going to remove any file in this folder that starts with uh, an O, starts with an O, and then uh, any and then any file that starts uh, with, with with has an extension O and an extension exe. Okay, and then what I'm going to do, I'm going to you know, I'll uh, I'll explain you guys what it means. I'll tell you guys in a minute. Initially, I'm going to list out all the contents in the folder, and then I'm going to remove all the object files and exe files that are available. And if there are any mod files, we should look at it. We look at it after some time. Okay, that those will also be removed. And what this this command does is it list again so that we get a look idea of what's going on. And then we compile this file. Uh, we compile this Fortran file using this minus c compiler flag in gfortran. And then I write gfortran minus o and then this will be uh, this will give us all the object files here so i'll just write weather dot o if this turns out to be fine sorry and this object flag should come at the last come here so minus o and then let me type uh, weather dot exe okay and i if i print this uh, it'll get ls it'll show everything now what i do is that I run this file weather.exe as simple as that now what this command uh, what the shell script does is that it does everything serially one by one so instead of you know compiling this compiling this code removing all these variables checking whether they are present or not and then I make building this and uh, executing this at the last what we can do is just write everything all the commands that we like to do in one sh single script one single script and run this again just run this once run this again and again to get all the jobs done properly so what I do is that if I just click ls okay okay so let me just use this command again let me just use this to clear again okay this will be helpful if I were to print ls we have this file called as weather.sh now to make it an executable what I type is that I type chmod 777 or you can type 755 or 775 and all to do all the job but 777 is good i mean this is actually a shell command to you know make make the file permissions executable see is to make the file permissions you know read give the file uh, file the permissions to read write and execute and all so it has i mean it if you guys want to know more about it, you can just check some sh check in the internet or google about it to know about this but as i know just follow with me we just type chmod 777 and then this file name weather.sh okay when you click this after this nothing happened but if we click ls it becomes a, a red file i mean green file now what happens is that to run all this and execute all this what i have to do instead of typing all the commands that we have typed here what i can do is just type uh, bash bash weather.sh some in some compilers even sh.sh will s sh space weather.sh will do i have a bash compiler so i'm using bash or sometimes what you can do is that I, I just like how another executable does you can do this but i prefer this one okay when i click enter okay when i click enter it just says that uh, it just lists us all the files that are present in the folder and says that uh, this star dot no file called a star no nothing like exe files are present no my files are present so he j and then it prints out all the files that are present and then it uh, compiles a program to give us the weather dot o 
and then it executes the builds the file to give us weather.exe okay and then if we type the number of days let's say let me just give for one day temperature of the layer is let's say 25 and the rh is about uh, 45 let's say it prints the day is warm and pleasant with the temperature 25 degrees celsius and a relative humidity of 45 percent not bad right now if i were to do all this again what i have to do is that to compile build and execute all this all i have to do is that press, press this again it'll do it'll do all the prerequisite process that are done and shows again now what i have to do is that i just enter two days that uh, ended the, on the first day i have a temperature of 40 and uh, a, a, a celsius of an rh of 85 now it asked me for the second day let me just say it is say 25 sorry it's 5 degrees celsius and the rh is like uh, 10 okay now it says the day the day is ha very hot and harsh the temperature 40 degrees celsius and relative humidity of 85 degrees 85 percent the second day it says the second day is freezing and dry with the temperature of 5 degrees celsius and the relative humidity of 10 percent sounds cool huh now if you were to run this again what you do is I click SH and it'll, it'll just run how many times as you want I'll just click one more time and just click uh, let's say uh, 20 let's say 31 and the RH is about uh, 20 the day is hot and dry with the temperature 31 degrees Celsius and the relative humidity of 20 percent well that's all I have for you guys in this tutorial. Now, in the ne from the next tutorial onwards, instead of just typing everything here, all the commands here, we'll use this, we'll use this shell scripting command, shell scripting program to make our lives a little more easy. And may maybe in the later case, we'll look at uh, uh, how to do all this in uh, make make files and all to make to make things even more to make uh, things even more a little easier to easier to do. Okay, that's all I have for you guys in this tutorial. Thank you guys for watching and see you guys in the next tutorial. Bye.